Hi, I am Michael Bean, and this is your lesson for myfreeactingclass.com for what is today? Tuesday, September the 22nd. Today, we are going to talk about story. Uh, we're going to talk about Hallmark. Uh, today, we are going to go over this week's Actors Challenge, which is a scene from a Hallmark movie of the week called The Music Teacher. Uh, and then I will have that posted to the website within probably five minutes of class being over if you want to go and get that script. So uh, let's start by uh, taking a look at the scene itself. Uh, the scene, uh, we're just gonna look at the first two pages of this four page audition script. This was, these are the actual audition sides for uh, the teen daughter. The, the, although you, if you are doing the actor's challenge and you are younger than teen, you know, it's still totally doable. Uh, the, uh, feel free to you know, get flexible about gender and things, uh, and the mom. Uh, the, uh, so let's get some volunteers. Christine, you said that you're willing to read the daughter for me? Okay, great. So Christina is Molly, you know, and uh, then uh, we need a Karen. And Caden, I see your interest in volunteering, and I think probably not the right fit. Uh, so, uh, Candy or Dia, uh, do one of you want to read Karen for me? So we could let Caden read Christina's mom, you know, just for the like comic relief value. Hello. Yep, I'm good for either, but I'm oh, at okay. my friend's house, so they're that. Oh, that's great! No, no, we don't need video. That's uh, it's totally fine. We'll be looking at the script together anyway. So I'm going to open up the script. Uh, Dia, you are Karen, and Christina, you are Molly. I will read all the stage direction. I believe it's just the two of you. So act two, interior, Karen's kitchen, evening. We, can, uh, we look up here, it's page 16. Uh, remember, you don't always get this because sometimes they, have, they uh, pull the sides into a different program, you know, but if you're lucky, they just grab it right from the shooting draft of the script, and so you can see where you are. It's about a minute per page when you're looking at a project, and so page 16 of a TV movie, movie's gonna be probably about two hours, usually about a minute a page, so you're looking at like 100, 120 pages, so page 16, you're very near the beginning still. You know, act two, it says. Uh, interior, Karen's kitchen, evening. Karen pu puts a meatloaf into the oven, sets the temperature and timer. She calls out. Molly, Molly. Molly comes into the kitchen. Your dad said he'd be home around eight. When this dings, take it out and... I know how to take out a meatloaf out of the oven. You'll be upstairs Facebooking and suddenly discover that it's tomorrow morning. What are you going to be doing anyway? It's a secret. Are you having an affair? Molly! Lexi's mom has affairs all the time. You don't have Lexi's mom, you have me. So your big, so your big secret is lame. Not lame at all. You know how last week some of us from Mrs. Daly's first class took her out to dinner? Well, we're gonna do a fundraiser so her class can keep going after this year. She doesn't know about it. You mean I might still get to be in our class next year? If we succeed. You're gonna perform? Good, and catch the italics and try it again. You're gonna perform? No, try the italics. Oh, this, means, like, this word is emphasized. Oh, so you're gonna perform? Like that? Hey, I was pretty good when I was your age. How can you remember that far back? Right, so the two of them are bantering with each other, you know, uh, the way it reads on the page is that like Molly's giving her mom lots of attitude. You know, then we've got some you know, crossed out stuff here that is different character, different scene. So I think probably don't need to read it uh, in terms of understanding Karen and Molly today. Now let's talk a little bit about Hallmark because it's been a while since we talked about Hallmark. So uh, Hallmark, uh, there it's uh, obviously they started as a greeting card company. Uh, now they have a channel, they make a whole bunch of movies. Depending on who you talk to, I think like almost a hundred of these movies a year, lots of them are Christmas movies. There's a bunch of them that have been 
shooting in uh, the last couple of months. You know, we had Leanne come in and talk about her experience on uh, one of those movies. We had Emily come in and talk, uh, Tennant come in and talk about her experience working on one of those movies. And that's, that's just really in the last couple of months. Tons of these cast and shoot in Vancouver. So let's take a look at the Hallmark Channel. So uh, Hallmark Channel, okay. All new, falling for da da da, right? So Hallmark Channel, here we are. You know, what is it? Schedule movies, fall harvest, watch live. You've got to get a sense of the kind of material you know, that Hallmark covers. Uh, in general, you know, it's very um, conservative, you know, kind of uh, you know, what uh, you might call like traditional family values. Uh, it's um, typically for a, um, it's typically for an older audience, even though the characters you know, are quite young. It's um, the way that I encourage students to think, of, think about it is that if you've got um, conservative older folks in, in your life, um, then you know, so if you've got your know, grandparents or like your uh, parents have like an you know, older friends or maybe you, your grandparents are like wild and crazy, but they have conservative friends. It's like, oh, right, it's for them. And so in the same way that the big silly comedies that we looked at in what last week's comedy lesson, you know, are for five and six-year-olds. These shows, not that these are the only people who watch them, but they're kind of made you know, for this like 50 to 65, uh, the conservative family values. And so what that means is that with these shows, uh, the, it's like Christmas you know, is the most magical thing. You know, there's always going to you know, be a happy ending. People are never going to be too broken up about it, no matter what's happening. Or you can see that you know, these these are not you know, like deep, dark, rip your guts out uh, shows. I mean, even the pictures. Just look how shiny they are. Look you know, how much kind of sparkle there is, right? Even this one, you know, the which is sort of as dramatic as we've got as far as pictures here, you know. Uh, you know, still, we can almost guarantee, you know, they're still like floating in puffy clouds, you know, even if they're not like outright smiling. Uh, more from the Hallmark Channel. So anyway, you get a sense of uh, what that is. So we look up the music teacher I am uh, on IMDB. Those wouldn't be available necessarily before the movie was made. So I'm cheating a little bit. Um, if we would go to the music teacher, and you know, just looking at the, this first image gives you a sense of what it is. I pulled up the trailer. We can watch the trailer. You know, a reminder, because I haven't done this in a number of weeks, you know, that if you were just getting an audition for this, you know, then what you would want to do is look up the director you know, uh, and the writer and see the last thing that they worked on. So the director is Ron Oliver. Often you know, that's a good guess. You know, so the music teacher was 2012. And so Broken Trust, Cupid Inc. Now this you know, looks a, to me like it's probably more Lifetime, Cupid Inc. But we could go watch the trailer for one of these. Ah, oh, there we go. Right, so uh, something like cute and romantic, you know, uh, something you know, that's you know, kind of more dramatic, you know, that we would look those up and watch little clips of them on YouTube to get a sense of you know, what that is. You know, now, one casting director, uh, J.J. Ogilvy, who you know, we haven't had uh, here on the free lessons uh, yet. Yet, I'll get him, I hope. Hey, J.J., if you're seeing this, come and join us. No, he's not gonna watch the party. Uh, has said in workshops, uh, look for the greeting card. Like in every scene, you know, what's the moral? What's the motto? What's, you know, what are people taking away? Uh, the uh, Judy Lee, in a who uh, did come in uh, as a guest a number of months ago, uh, has said, no matter how bad things are, you, uh, people know in the Hallmark, you know it's going to get better. You know, there's always hope. Uh, if, you're, if you're talking about your spouse who just died, you know, then there's a sense that like, you know, yes, you're grieving, but also they're in a better place. You know, because they're in heaven and you're going to be okay. You know, a lot of the, um, you know, the sort of traditional family values, you know, uh, goes along, you know, with, uh, like I said, uh, religious and conservative. You know, and so, uh, 
your uh, family is the best thing, your marriage is forever, it's also like the, the best thing that can happen to a person that is gonna make you happy forever, right? That the, a lot of these uh, shows end with the char main characters you know, getting engaged or getting married uh, in, or saving Christmas. There's a lot of saving Christmas. So here's a preview for the actual movie. We're still living on Part of education over 16 years. Don't take that away from me. We're going to do a fundraiser so that our class can keep going. We couldn't go to the same shop with high school. Stop. Stop. Don't you remember anything I taught you? Any comments? Stars in the Hallmark Channel original movie, the music teacher, premieres Saturday, August 11th at 9. All right, so a bunch of those actors uh, are Vancouver actors. This is typically what happens you know, in Hallmark is they'll uh, the lead will be somebody who they're bringing in from the States, somebody who sort of has uh, the kind of credits. You know, often it's somebody who's sort of used to do bigger movies, you know, now they're you know, getting them to lead a Hallmark movie. But it's the kind of thing where the audience will be like, oh, right, I remember that person. And then they'll fill the rest of the cast you know, with Vancouver people. Yeah, so working on these movies is a great opportunity for uh, local folks. Yeah, and I. I encourage you to just look at them as a particular kind of fantasy land, right? There's just a particular kind of fantasy land where like everything is going to be happy at the end, where no matter how bad everything is, there's still hope. And you, know, you still got that kind of sparkle to it. Uh, the, and where Christmas is the most magical thing and is going to save everybody. You know, and so with that for context, the scene where it looks like the daughter, you know, like we could read the scene as much edgier. You know, with the daughter saying, like, Lexi's mom has affairs all the time. Um, yeah, but probably, like, that's, the, probably, that's probably the edgiest thing that anybody said in a Hallmark TV movie in, two, in 2012. And so it's going to have to be delivered with lots of humor. Like, it's really clear that this is a joke or that she's being risque, uh, right? So you're going to have to do that for this kind of style. Understanding the style and the tone is uh, important for telling the kind of stories that go with a show like this. So... Uh, there's your uh, Hallmark story. So what I would love to do is uh, quickly go over our story questions, you know, and if we can zip through those fast enough, then we'll take a couple of lines of the scene uh, and uh, give a couple of people a chance to practice them. Uh, so let me pull up the story questions. And uh, because we've got, so Christina's you know, probably gonna want to uh, you know, look at the teen girl. You know, what, what's everybody else want? Yeah, the, we can basically look at the teen or the mom. You know what, let's look at the teen. We looked at the mom last time. We, last week we did the mom. This week let's arbitrarily, because Christina is here, and we haven't seen Christina in weeks and weeks, you know, uh, look at the teen girl. Okay, so uh, let's, I'll take, um, I'll show you the script again quickly, just because I've been talking about other things for a while. So the you know, mom calls uh, the, the daughter into the room. You know, there's some banter upstairs. Facebooking. When I give this scene uh, to students uh, in my teen class, they're like Facebooking, and I think this is a perfect example of the fact that this is you know, written for a for grandparents' age. You know, like the like because at this point, really, even the moms are going to be like Facebooking. Uh, <laughs> grandparents are are, uh, are more likely to go. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's. Facebooking, like whatever you do with that thing. Actually, I don't know. You know, my actual mom's a grandparent, and you know, she's probably on Facebook more than I am. Uh, the but you can see in there's these little clues to who the audience is, and, and I would say that that's one of them. So when you get lines like that, just don't make too big a deal out of them. If you get, and this goes not just for Hallmark but for anything, if you get language that is really not the way you speak, and I'll, I'll often get students say. Well, can I just change it? Like, can I just say it the way I would say it? You know, and I really recommend that you don't do that. I would say that in general, the reason that it comes across as a character comes across as not you. Oh, I'm going to have to excuse myself and grab water. One second. <coughs> there you go. The reason that it comes across as not you you know, is because of the language that the writer gave you. you know, and so often, especially those weird things, like you're going to be upstairs Facebooking, uh, become uh, a character thing, right? It's, it's, you start and you're like, I would never say this. And so you're like, cool, so I have to be silly about it. Or I have to 
make fun of it on purpose. Like, you know, I, maybe it's like, you know, and I know that I know it's not called Facebooking, but like, I'm going to be old and lame, you know, for fun, you know, as part of the banter that we have, maybe that's what it is. So whatever you find to bring a, a silly line like that to light. Right? Are you having an affair? <laughs> Lexi's mom has affairs all the time. Does Lexi's mom have affairs all the time? If it's Hallmark, mm, probably not. Uh, or uh, if she does, uh, we'll never really know about it because Lexi's mom is not probably going to show up in this movie. Uh, this is Daly's class, you know, which is the one we saw in the preview doing the fundraiser. There's the Brighton. <gasps> wow, wait, you're going to perform? Uh, we've heard Christina you know, sort of find that line. Again, uh, italics, you know, so if you have a line underlined or a line in italics, the writer's trying to give you information about the emotional content. I don't think that, strictly speaking, it has to be said that way. If you find something that tells the story and is just as vivid, I would just say don't ignore it. You know, so it's a good idea to actually look at that. How can you remember that far back, right? So there's, there's teasing you know, between uh, the mom and, and Molly. Now, uh, here's the story questions. So the style, uh, IMDB says about the music teacher, that is a drama, but I'm going to qualify it's a Hallmark drama, or so maybe family drama, something like that. Uh, the writer's story, mom and daughter bantering, Uh, what's my story if I'm Molly? And, uh, and this is where you know, I need you to uh, throw what you can uh, into the chat window and help me out yeah, so that I'm not making this all up myself. Uh, that idea when you're looking at a scene, and I would say that probably with something like Hallmark, having your own story might even be more important than usual. Yeah, because there's some, some scripts that you're going to read and you're like, oh my God, this story, I love it. Like, this is for me. This speaks to me. This brings me to life. You, with something like Hallmark, you might need to find a reason to make it interesting for yourself. You might, I, you might need to find something uh, that um, makes it feel interesting and alive. You know, so what's, what's your story if you're Molly? Music is my life, great. Or, right, so we've got music, we've got the relationship with mom, uh, we've got the banter, you know, uh, we've got, yeah, I'm in the middle of something, great, yeah, yeah. You know, or, you know, uh, I just wanna get back to my own stuff. I'm doing my thing. I would say that one of the other uh, things that sort of is a clue in the script is, you know, I know how to take a meal up out of the oven and then all this teasing. You know, so, um, you know, uh, something like, uh, uh, my mom still thinks I'm a kid. Right, which you know, would, uh, right, or, or, right, like, you know, I'm very mature. There we go, all right, so Christina was thinking it while I was saying a different version of that loud. Uh, what is the arc? What is the change of, how does the scene change from the beginning to the end? So it's like, yeah, yeah, I know how to take a meatloaf out of the oven, and it ends with, oh, you're like, something fun's happening, but I'm needling my mom. Uh, what, would, uh, what would we call that? Going once, going twice. So irritated, annoyed, um, you know, and hallmark annoyed. You know, so we, we just want to use uh, whatever word and then to uh, playful, uh, ha ending happy but embarrassed. Yeah, yeah. All right. So we want you'd want to pick something that fits uh, your story. Right? This isn't a, this is definitely the arc in the scene. It's a, you know, what's effective for this? So descriptive words for Molly. Uh, we've got mature, not very mature. What else? Uh, sassy maybe, you know, or witty. What else? 
Now, I talked about this in my uh, class on Monday. And I, so, uh, Christina, do you think that Molly thinks of herself as knowing it all? Because that sounds a lot like the way somebody else would describe it from the outside. You'd be like, yeah, know it all. You know, uh, and so she might describe herself as intelligent. Something like that's clever, smart. There we go. Clever, yeah, yeah right. So that she's in, she's enjoying like how clever she is. She's nice, right? So we've got lots of words from Molly to describe herself. And if you're in Hallmark, having characters be nice probably a good idea. Uh, descriptive words for Karen. So what does Molly think Karen is like? Bossy, nice. Oh no, that's oh, that was from before. Bossy. Okay, old. Yeah, and maybe we put nice on there too. You know, so she's old, but like you know, I'm not going to be mean to her because she's so nice. I'm just going to tease her about it. <laughs> she's trying to be cool. Oh yeah, she's trying to be cool. Trying to be too cool, right? So perfect for the relationship with the mom. Script the relationship, mother, daughter. Right, she's, uh, she's slow, great addition, Kaden. Mom, like she just doesn't catch on that fast. You know, I know I'm super clever, but mom, slow. Uh, personalization, you know, what is in your personal life that helps you empathize with the feelings behind the experience, right? So what do you know about talking to somebody who uh, has these qualities? Or what do you know about um, feeling your own cleverness. Yeah, and so it doesn't have to be a family interaction at all. It can be like, oh yeah, there's that one friend who I just love giving a hard time. And I'm, so I'm gonna try and approaching it like that. That's how I'm gonna personalize it. It says mother, daughter, but I'm gonna think of, oh gosh, my friend, Wyo, who I just like love bantering with. Uh, but then I tried out and I was like, no, oh, that doesn't quite work. So instead I'm going to use uh, my own mom and I'm gonna see if that you know, feels right. You know? It's like, oh no, because I don't, it's not quite as bantery. So, right, so I find a couple of different options and I just try them one at a time. Again, this is something uh, that comes up when I'm working with students a lot is that it's easy to get stuck in this school mentality of thinking there's a right choice and trying to make the right choice as though there's only one. And so often what happens is people do this sort of halfway. They're like, well, I've got three different things that kind of feel right. And so I'll just kind of be somewhere between them. And that's when you usually get very muddled result you know, or uh, ineffective result. And so I would say it's generally more effective to choose a single one, try it, and then see how it affects you. I'm like, okay, that one didn't you know, bring it to life. What do I want? Uh, so if, uh, if I'm Molly, what do I want? Right, to keep my music teacher, sure. Music, yeah, to know what's going on. That's a great choice, Christina. To know what's going on or, you know, uh, to enjoy myself or to, right? So, uh, and then objective phrase, if you are uh, the, uh, and I can just use the stuff that we've already got here on the list, right? So we can, we can have what's going on or, uh, you're so old, right? As long as you know, uh, we know we're uh, we're talking to somebody nice, you know, or I want to be involved, be involved, yeah. And often with these objective phrases, I just keep breaking them down into emotional language that is um, simpler because it tends to land more. Uh, it tends to land in a more significant way on somebody emotionally. You know, I, so uh, I want to be involved. You know, right? Or uh, can I help? You know, or you're so slow. Ooh, that one sounds mean when I say it, but maybe when Caden says it, it's really funny. Um, you know, uh, uh, I might say you're so not cool. You know, because for me, that's got like the sort of joking, you know, or the you know, a clever aspect to it, you know, that contains some of the better. You're so not cool. Oh, mom, you're so not cool. 
you know, or right, or uh, you're hiding something, or where are you going? Yeah, right, all of this is distraction from where are you going? Like, this is not usual, it's a Tuesday night. What's going on, what's going on, what's going on? Like, tell me the secret. Right, so uh, lately what I've been doing is I've been printing these uh, after the class and then I've been including them when I upload the files to the uh, website. Yeah, so, uh, for you. Uh, shortly after this lesson, I will have uh, all of this uploaded. If you just go to myfreeactingclass.com and you scroll, oh, nah, nah, uh, and you scroll down all the way to the bottom, right here, uh, this link uh, will take you directly to the script. You know, and so I'm hoping that some of you choose to do uh, either Molly or uh, to do Karen. You know, and just a reminder that you don't have to memorize those lines, you know, right? I, I strongly recommend it. Memorizing lines is something that I ask my students to do when they're taking class, but also it's not always possible. Sometimes you get an audition with 24 hours. And so one of the things you can do, right? If I'm, so if I'm recording this with Candy and I'm like, hey Candy, you're like, you're my friend. Can you come, you know, just have a Zoom with me and record this thing. And what I do is I grab the gray top bar on the Zoom meeting and I drag Candy's face over until she's in one corner of my screen because then she's up here. But if I put her in the middle down here, then not only is my eyeline weirdly low, but also it looks like I'm uh, looking directly at the camera, or the risk is that it looks like I'm looking at the camera because it's in the same line. So I want to put Candy's face all the way over in the corner of the screen. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the script and open up the PDF of the script and then uh, bring that window to the front and put it right below Candy's face you know, and make it a little bit smaller so the lines are right in the middle, right underneath Candy's face. So then when I'm running the lines, I'm like, so Candy, that's what I have to say to you. And it still looks like I'm looking at Candy because I'm looking in this exactly the same line. And it's so easy to do. It's much easier to do on a computer than it is with a script in your hand. Yeah, so if the reason, uh, or the, if the thing that's holding you back from doing the actor's challenge is like, oh gosh, learning lines, great, do this. Practice sight reading. Also fantastic practice. You had a great way to sort of take advantage and game the technology to do something uh, that I think most people still haven't figured out. It's a lot easier to do now than it used to be. The trick there is you have to be able to, you have to glance down, get the line, and then look up and say it. Because if I'm talking to Candy and I'm like, Candy, you know, here's the thing that I've got to say to you. And for some mysterious reason, I'm looking at your knees for like a large portion of what I'm saying to you. And I'm just glancing up at your eyes periodically, but mostly I'm looking at your knees. And that's less effective. Just throwing that out there. Uh, okay. The, any final questions uh, before I wrap up uh, today's lesson on Hallmark Music Teacher? Okay. Uh, great. Well, uh, that's it for today, Tuesday the 22nd. Tomorrow we're going to have Josh Zaharia coming and talking to us about comedy. Uh, Thursday is going to be Ask Me Anything and then uh, some kind of like fun practice session. You know, we'll probably use some uh, like a little piece of the music teacher and I'll look for you know, something fun and silly that we can do. Uh, thanks for making time for us today and uh, hope to see you at the next one. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Thank everybody. You. Bye.